Welcome back, it's Magic Team Magician Tarot, and today we're going to do a deck review of some of my faves. This one is the Black Light Tarot, based on the Rider weight. This is, oh my gosh, this guy named John. <clears throat> Hold on, I have the information here. James Abrams and Christine Aguilar. Amazing, amazing deck. And amazing series of decks, honestly. <clears throat> so, let's get into it. A couple of peculiar things about this deck. You have, obviously, this amazing black light ink. But then you have double of two cards. The Lovers in the World card. Possibly the Ten of Cups as well. I feel like there's two of the best cards in the deck. Like alternate versions, which really cool. Okay, here's the first world. Really awesome. Black Power. I love the fro. Love it. It's gorgeous. And then... I'm not black, obviously, but I support Black Power. <laughs> if you have a problem with that, bye. But seriously, let's keep it serious. And then we got, oh my God, where is the other world card? Where in the world is the other world card? Here it is. Okay, once again, repeated imagery, this beautiful fro. I love it, cause it's like a halo, you know, it's a halo nod. And the halo means a lot in terms of enlightenment, not just Christianity, so enlighten yourself. And we got this cool melty two of swords. I'm having coffee, so excuse my coffee tea. Y'all already know. Welcome back, Magic to Magician Tarot. We keep it real. Here is the lover's card. So freaking cute. Inspired by, you know, pacifist messages from the groovy days. Make love, not war. <clears throat> A personal motto of mine, honestly. And then I do believe there was another lover's card in here, so you're gonna have to watch some of my readings to get the inside scoop. And I'll show you guys the back because I think the back is honestly my favorite part. The front of the cards have borders, but the back is gorgeously borderless. So, the mirror design, it's the two of pentacles. Oh yeah, and it's sexy. Just a sexy, overall sexy deck. You could take this to like a strip club. You could take this to Prom. You could take it to, you know, your college roommate's little den off campus, of course. <clears throat> now let us move on. Okay, this one for a total change of pace. I just wanted to keep it crazy because you all know how I am. The new Paladini Tarot. Suffice it to say, I got a deal, but new Paladini Tarot. I didn't know what to expect, but I was a little bit intrigued by the name because I'm Italian, but also the artwork. I found the artwork to be very illustrative, but sort of timeless. It reminded me of like Tommy to Paola, but like refined. So comment below if you know Stregonona. Remember Stregonona. Okay, now looking on the inside here, we got the Temperance and the Fool. So a message for some of y'all, but look at this. Like he's so like queeny and Petite, it's got this little flower. I mean, the Fool has always been a very gender neutral card to me, but I love this crazy, like, gorgeous mascara face and the beard. Reminds me of some of my queens I used to work with when I was <laughs> doing drag. And then here is the beautiful Temperance card. So that'll give you a little bit of an idea. Wow, I didn't even notice the angel wing details, but this will give you an idea of what it looks like. And in the back, sickening with the Ouroboros and it's red cool it's like very vintage feel but kind of mystical it's like mystical reminds me of the ethereal visions deck which i love it's gilded but it's like soft it's soft but it's not trying to make everything positive or make everything dark it really is letting the images 
speak for themselves. <clears throat> the Eight of Rods, the Eight of Wands. The Rods are the Wands in this deck. Uh, pentacles, this cool snow effect on it. I get this King of Swords. I also feel like there's different cultures in this deck, which is really important to me. Like, I feel like this is sort of a Horus type character. He's got his falcon. Not overtly Egyptian, but he does have like the prosthetic beard and things that suggest, you know. It's vaguely European, but it's got different flavors. Like I might have some Mediterranean flavor. It's a little bit Italian, I feel like. I mean, the name Paladini, it's gotta be. This tower, it's like, it's missing the people fleeing from the tower, but it's coming out of like this cool rock formation, these cool flames, like these little lightning flames reminds me of some of the older woodcut decks. Nine of Cups, look at this guy's face. Like my favorite part about this deck is the expression on the faces. They're all so unique. They really feel like they're different characters. You feel like you're reading a book or something. Here's the Hierophant. I love it. The Hierophant gets a bad name, but I really, I think it's kind of a badass card. Okay, Nine of Cups. I'm a Cups person, so I'm always gonna be looking for how them Cups look. Love that. Cause I hate how they always make the Cups these days, they make the Cups all like whiny and cry. Look at that Ace of Rods. It's a scepter, it's gorgeous. Very natural looking. Look at this guy. It also gives you different esoteric symbols, like I said, but like some astrology type symbols. As you can see, you got the Aries Ram right here. Oh, it is. This is a early Egyptian page of rods. <clears throat> Standing in front of Giza. Love it. If you speak Arabic, also comment below. I'm learning Arabic. Or if you speak Italian or Spanish, comment below. Let me know where y'all from. Okay. A little bit of a NF safe, like not safe for work. A little titties. They're not offensive. They're just mammary glands. The hermit. He's got a cool hat. This hanged man also, I feel like illumination and awareness and like next level cognition is really well represented in this deck because you can see again, another halo, beautiful 10 of cups. Look at this justice card. She almost has like an alien -y face, which I feel like is good for justice because she's weighing a leaf and coins. Look at the expression on her face. Like, I don't know if she's a gray, but I'll take it. And then, very simple, looks drawn, love it. Now, I move on to something. Once again, switching gears completely. I'll show you on the back again, cause it's just sick. They're a little bit sticky, which, you know, older decks that are not, they're more plasticky and less, they're paper, but with like a, a smooth finish. They can be a little bit clumpy, but they do shuffle. I'll show y'all a bridge. This is my first time recording on my phone, so I apologize for the little shakiness. I much prefer to do on my old MacBook, but she's getting on in age and the audio is just, so hopefully this audio is better. But yeah, as you can see, they do work, you know, for however many times you want to shuffle them. They're not going to be a problem. Now, these, the Mystic Mondays, these are going to be a little bit of an issue when you first try to shuffle them. Because if you're like a bridge shuffler, you know, a riffle shuffle type person, you're gonna be like, oh no, oh no, these are not really, but uh, you just force yourself, force them to submit your will. They're just cards. They like that. Just manhandle them a little bit or woman handle them a little bit, you know, they're okay. So back of the card, Simple all-seeing eye with a little bit of holographic effect, which you can see on the front. Beautiful. Here's the sun. They're much more graphic and modern, obviously. They're, you know, for the modern mystic. Bright colors, here's the Ace of Pentacles, but with a dash of pastel, which I really enjoy as a Pisces. Less faces on this and more just abstract feeling. Like here she is in front of a tombstone, which, or a doorway, 
or a doorway. That's what I mean about their abstract, which is really fun for like intuitive readers. If you're a person that's like, you know, just stare at a card and just get lost in all the different meanings. It's very, very simple wheel. I'm not a super fan of this wheel because I like when a wheel has the different animals around it. I love these flamingos though. Here's the lovers. Sometimes they do substitute animals for the people or they take the people out. Like in the lovers, you would usually have, you know, two characters. Here's the princess. Here's one that like gives me a challenge. Whenever she comes out, like I cannot help but think she a dancer, you know? But like, she's just holding a wand. <laughs> you know, be careful with like your own biases whenever you're reading. I don't even know why I said biases. Biases. Okay, here's the Queen of Swords. But I think if you're a brand new reader, you're going to have those anyway. So you got to check yourself while you wreck yourself at all times. At all times. Love this one because instead of a lion, we got the white tiger. Y'all know I'm a fan of the white tiger, the snow leopard, the, the crazy anomalies of nature, the snow creatures. I'm a big fan of snow. All right. Princess of Pentacles. See, the princesses in this deck are very, like, laid back, I want to say. You know, they like, they kind of all favor one another, they look a little similar to each other. The tower, not a fan of this one either, but I do feel the chaotic energy coming off of it. So that's how it should be. The tower shouldn't make you feel like, oh, yay, the tower. <laughs> I hate when people do that, but I love when people read. So if you're somebody that does that, mm, that's like reframing, go ahead with your bad self. That's cool. Five of Wands, again, super simple, not a fan of that style. But whenever there are figures in the card, I really like it. Now, that's not to say that I need a card deck to have a ton of people and faces in it. But just the way that I read, I guess, four swords. I like the swords in her hair, so I really like this one. And then we got some wands. Ooh, okay. Our magician, though. Look at her. Look at her. She's got the infinity scrunchie. And she's got these dope crystals in an orb formation. So she's obviously levitating them. Love that. Okay. You guys kind of get the gist of this one. If you like it, let me know. I like to read with it. Especially I like to pair it with like other dark looking decks. I love the foil effect. And they do spread super nice. You know. Look at that. Okay. Now, moving on. I'm going to show you guys an oracle deck. It's an oldie but a goodie. The John Holland Psychic Tarot for the Heart. This is a must-have oracle deck. Whether you are a old-school, by-the-book reader, or if you're a positive, uplifting, reframing reader, doesn't matter. This is the perfect deck for you because it has both of those messages and yet each card, even the darkest card, it's for the heart. So it's got a little bit of softness. I'd say it's got softness, it's got positivity. Interesting thing, if you're like a chakra person, chakra worker that I learned, you might not know this if you're not. Green is the color of the heart, not red. Red is the root chakra. Okay, similar to the Mystic Monday, we got another awesome gilded effect, but this time it's gold, okay? Sticky, sticky for sure, and big and hard to shuffle, but it does make them super durable. Like I got these secondhand, very, very little chipping. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God. Like keywords, you may be a fan of keywords. You may not be a fan of keywords. You may be not a fan of like borders, but you gotta admit a black border, so nice. So I guess the theme with this particular deck that I'm showing you is um, the illustrative style, different illustrative styles. Look at this. There's a little bit of realism and a lot of like cosmic swirly. Such a fan of cosmic swirly. Here's one that says manifest, very similar to obviously the magician card. So you're gonna have some echoes of like a regular tarot deck because it's psychic tarot or the heart oracle deck. So like I said, best of both worlds. Simply love, the messages are clear. It's like, you know, just, just love, just love in the way that like a father would love in a healthy way an unconditional kind of love. Here's Teach. It's this lovely Pomeranian, like little lion dog. It could be like a long haired Chihuahua. Love this. You also have some more abstract 
Look at this. All these different hands. More abstract ideals and drawings. Just breathe. Really beautiful. But then it will smack you in the face of truth. You just confront or confront. So you're gonna confront your shadow self. You know, if you're really reading these messages, they can be very helpful. And I feel like this deck is one of the more magic decks. Like if I, and when I say magic, I mean truly magic. I read with this deck before and I've pulled out a card and I've been like, okay, let's see. Reshuffled and it wants to come back out. It just wants to keep coming back out. Look at this. This guy's got chain mail. Look at the detail on the chain mail. He's giving me John of Arc. Look at that. And then the face on the shield. Moving on. Very simple. So they're not bound by any kind of theme or time period. It's very timeless feeling. It almost feels like it's in a, from another realm. But it's like memories of our realm. Here, seek the truth. <sighs> Rebuild. So the keywords really help. But then sadness and isolation. Like I said, they're not all like um, trying to gloss over it or sugarcoat refusing to see for example that's so interesting that's such a great card i haven't actually seen this card in this deck before which is why i said this deck is magic like it just shows you the same messages over and over again if you're not getting the message if you're not getting the picture the image it will keep spitting that card out no matter how much you shuffle it and you guys that watch my videos you know i shuffle obsessively like i will not start out a reading with just like your spread already out uh -uh. i don't play that no offense to anybody that does but He's got this beautiful third eye helmet and yet he cannot see. Look at that. Refusing to see. I love it. Love a balance. This is a very simple message about like, you know, a little dicky earth type thing. Everybody here is here for the same reason. We're here because we're here because we're here because we're here <laughs> kind of thing. Lean. Here's a waiting results. Never seen that one either. But as you can see, they're integrating the tree into like the dress and connecting it to her core and she's got like a bonnet crazy he's giving and receiving success and growth darkest fears look at that Ooh, i've never seen this one either dedicated effort this is giving me um oh my god what was frida's husband's name oh my god that's gonna bother me diego rivera this give me diego rivera okay coming together oh and then they may have like a little, almost like suggesting birth. She's got a Valkyrie vibe, trust. And it's interesting because the Valkyries lead the wounded or the dead soldiers to like Valhalla or something like that. So, you know, you got to let go and trust. Heal, breaking the chains. Love it. Okay, joy and stability. And as you can see, it goes on. You know, there's... Also, okay, here we go. I almost, this is what I'm talking about, this deck. I almost did not come across any of the chakra specific cards, but they, they are here and they just very simply mentioned the chakra. So that'll be your key if you're a reader who's using these cards that the, the person that you're reading for is developing that part of their chi flow, is unblocking that part of their chi flow, accessing some parts of it and so on and so forth. So. That's the John Holland Psychic Tarot for the Heart. That's my hand if y'all want to palmistry me. All right, Magic Team Digital Tarot, like, share, and subscribe below. Y'all already know what to do.